So it's by 35. And reception of guests. Thank you, David. <laughs> Yet again, that's on the meeting. We, we were going to go around just so that Holly can know everybody's name really quickly and just your name and where you're from. Is that okay? I'll start on this one. I'm going to start again. My name is Vera Frazier, Berlin School Board. Uh, Chris McBain, uh, Romney School Board. Allison Cornwall, Romney. Will Baker from Doty. Dorothy Naylor, Callis. Laura, is not here. Lindy Johnson, okay. East Montpelier. <coughs> Susanna Culver, East Cows. Cows. Do you need anyone repeated? Or Culver. Yep. Okay. Lori Beagle from the Central Office. Any numbers missing? <laughs> no, I don't okay. care. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sure. Okay. Any agenda revisions or board comments? Mm -hmm. I have board comments. Okay. So um, the Berlin board met last night with the select board, um, mostly to discuss the fire department lease. To discuss That's the what? The fire department lease, because the fire department oh. in the town of Berlin is on Berlin school property. Mm -hmm. um, so this is more just for informational purposes for those who will be continuing on to the merge board because I'm not sure that the timeline we can get the subdivision and the paperwork done to transfer that land to the town of Berlin fire department prior to June 30th so that might be one of the items still hanging out there um, in the works um, we also discussed last night doing something similar to Callis with an easement um, added to the deed for town usage of the building so right now, as of today, that that's in Scott Cameron's hands, and we're waiting to hear back from him. So okay. just FYI. Thank you. Any other board? Quick question: How many boards are considering um, uh, the easement issue the way that Callis had the, pr the proposal Callis made? I guess, or what they're planning to do? As far as I know, it's just Berlin and Callis. We are too. So we are too? Yeah. Yeah, we did vote on it this week. Oh, okay. So, and that will be discussed in the new board. I guess passed on to the transitional board or the new board? What? That will be later, you know, discussed in the transitional board? Or? We are hoping to meet with Scott early next week okay. where we can get this done prior to June 30th, but if we don't, that's why I'm, I'm putting the information out there now that it's in the works, and I'm not sure it will get done before. June 30th. June, I think we need some time vote. It does. Yeah. And Berlin is a floor vote, not in. Oh, it, 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 it. Okay. I guess I have yeah. questions, but I'll wait. It's not part of the agenda, so I'll wait to yeah. go through the picture. Yeah. Anything else? Welcome. Okay. You had to see all Okay. So let's move to the consent the agenda. I have a motion to approve the minutes of by 219. So moved. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes as presented, please say aye. 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 Any updates? Everybody aye. So, Okay, discussion agenda. Develop the so year 20 budget to recommend to the new unified school board. Okay. I think I'll leave this to you. Sure, Laura. yes. Uh -huh. So on page, um, let's see. Yeah. On page eight, uh, Bill had offered to draft up a letter trying to clarify for the community um, what we might print in this. Um, new budget booklet that we're going to be putting together mm -hmm. and so he sent that out to you in a packet it included um, some information with regard to how did we get to the um, four thousand four million dollar accounting change and down at the bottom I put together a chart showing um, the budgets that were previously approved by the voters and the SU board which was um, 
on the second page. The SU board approved the full Washington Central budget, not the partial. So the SU board back in December approved a $9 million budget, just to refresh your memory. So it just shows how we went from a $29 million to a $33 million. It's on page 9. Um, having said that, uh, Bill asked if anyone had feedback on what else might need to be explained um, to help the voters understand this current situation we're in. Um, and um, at this point, he thought that the board chair, which is um, Matthew DeGroote, would be the one signing this. Um, sometimes people have to go board. It all depends on the pleasure of the group. So that would be feedback we're looking for. Do you want me to pause here, or do you want yeah. me to keep going? If, well, I just wanted to ask if everybody had a chance to right. look at the numbers, or if you want five minutes. I want to make sure that everybody had a chance what, to look at this. Which email was it connected to? It was the, oh, the package, okay. the first package that Krista sent in okay. 45919. I can yeah. tell you the date that she sent the I had mine open. May 7th. May 7th. Oh, okay. I've got the back Thank you. So Tuesday. Well, Tuesday, um, May 7th at 11.48, she said. Okay. Here's the package. Okay. Well, there's two of them. Do you I just have a couple comments. Well, yeah. There seems to be some typos with the years. There's a reference to August of 2019 and December of 2019. Oh. So I think that should be 2018 for both of them. Um, on that first page describing in August of 2019 right. the, the right. executive committee and then the next paragraph December. Right. Thank you. And then on page 16, um, this would be something that was is in here, is that right? I'm sorry? Page 16 would be something that would be included in this warning? Is yes. That, is that right? Yes. Um, I'm just wondering if, I mean, these numbers are confusing enough, and does it make sense to include equalized tax rates without the CLA and the CLA? Oh, okay. You know, the um, I was going to go through the rest of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. I'm sorry, sorry. We just were pausing on the memo. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes, and I should have been more clear. <laughs> okay. So when, uh, it, this is, anybody have a problem with uh, Matt being the only one signing it, or does everybody feel like they have to sign it? On this report? On this report? Uh, I just make this, you know, not only because a lot of people sign it, and just one person okay. I think has more food if a lot of people sign it. So uh, my preference would be to have as many people sign it as possible, mm -hmm. as many of the board members sign as possible. How does everybody else feel? Yeah. And it's from the transition board? It's first. Yes. Isn't that what we are, the transition yeah. board? Yes. So yeah. then we would sign it? Yeah. That's fine. Okay. The other thing, we, and we talked about this, I thought, uh, previously, is that having parts of it in bold so it stands out. And I would suggest bolding the first, um, or altering the, um, right above where the graph is, uh, where the sentence starts, this accounting change. So have, you know, basically breaking it into two parts um, and having it say this accounting change means the expenditure budget will increase by you know, increase four million four hundred forty one thousand two hundred six dollars. Period. This accounting change, and then put put that whole the sentence I'm going to say in bold. This accounting change will not have an impact on the total educational spending or overall tax rate for WCUUSD. Just so that's clear to because I, mean, I think that's the thing when. Folks see a four it's million dollar okay. increase in the budget yeah. and say, okay. Okay. Yeah. And have that really stand out because I think we talked about that, yeah. emphasizing that mm -hmm. point. So bold the two sentences. Um, just I think only the second one that talks oh, about that. Yeah. 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 I was writing so I couldn't keep up with you. Okay, great. So that's all bold. I got it. Mm -hmm. What would be going out? Would it just be this letter and this one um, graph, or is, is all this paperwork going out? So at the <coughs> annual meeting, um, the voters approved that a postcard would go out, mm -hmm. and that these booklets would be available throughout the community in various locations. And that occurred at the annual meeting. So, um, the so this would be a booklet, and Bill sent, handed out samples of the booklet we did before, where the front page had pictures of students. Yeah. Um, 
I have. So this letter that would be signed by the transition board would be on the postcard or would be part of the booklet? No, part of the, part of the booklet. booklet. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what we were showing was a template of this booklet that went out recently with like the 32 budget. The first part was the letter from the board and that was the same order we were going to try here. Okay. And then the second page um, would be the warning, which is signed by the board. And then the next page is page 11 here, which is a chart of student um, enrollment. Um, do you want me to keep going with the rest of the packet? Sure, unless everybody, anybody else has on the memo, just on the first three. I found a mistake on the menu. On the Besides very, what, will tell us or? Yeah, on the very, on, under the chart, it says Washington Central Unified Board and I are very proud of the dedicated work all of our staff. We have been, it's a second sentence, we have been working hard oh, yeah. together. Yeah. Okay. And then if the board's going to sign, it should go from I to we throughout yeah. the document? Uh, yeah, yes. I, I think it's fine in the beginning because I'm pleased to put it. Board and I we are pleased to have this opportunity. I, I think it all should, if we're all okay. going to sign it, it should all be we. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I'll, yep. I'll let someone do that. read it. It was kind of strange. Yeah. Yeah. Transition, it's going to be transitional board. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Is it transitional or transition? I've never thought that's no. true. It's, it's You're transition right. board. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. transition board. Mm -hmm. You can keep going. Okay, Thank you. so on page 10 is the blank warning. Um, Bill had mentioned we get a draft to you by May 15th. Um, we had sent it out last week to Chris Leopold. Uh, basically, from what we're looking at, there would be two articles. The first would be with regard to the budget, very similar to what you're used to, where you have, you know, how does this budget compare to the prior year on a cost per equal as pupil? It's the standard language written by the state, so it's not really discretionary. Um, the second article that we identified would be to request permission to create a capital fund because that was something I, I identified um, that we hadn't done. We usually do that at every uh, separate budget at the time that it's initially set up. So where boards are considering right now transferring fund balance to capital funds and transferring it over to the new entity's capital fund, you need voter permission to have a capital fund. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So like when Rummy set up their computer fund and their capital fund, you had voter approval to establish it way back. Yep. U32 had permission. You all have. So this would just set up the new entity to have permission to accept those funds as a capital fund. Yeah. And to but maintain still, it as a capital fund. But, but we would still be keeping our capital funds in each school. True. Within and this it fund. Be, it's like a separate business, like a food program idea, okay. where all the money, the revenue and expenses go through a capital fund and that's where you maintain all these projects. They are identified by building. I have it all set up that way. Any questions? So those are the two items uh, that we sent to Chris to have him critique yeah. and verify. And obviously it's a long morning because you have to list all the different locations for people to vote and, and stuff like that. Um, moving on to page 11, that is um, the information we received from NESDAQ who does um, enrollment predi predictions based on historical. So that was just the overall chart that we had that um, Bill thought you were requesting we have something in here about student child count. It looks pretty flat. Pretty flat. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of boring looking, but um, now I'm going to move on to page 12. Can I ask a question about that? Sure. Would it, when I read that, I, it, I found it very confusing because I was, with that comma there, I was looking for Washington Central, Vermont Historical, and projected enrollment. Like there should be three things, and we're not we're not talking about any other Washington Central. So right. could we just take out the VT? Because okay. it suggests that there's also like Vermont right. enrollment in there, yeah. like all of Vermont. Right. Um, oh, thank you. Nasdaq does put that in every chart we have, so I'll ask them to strike it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. But we're here for to get feedback. And then the next page is what you were given a while back, which is a summary of all of the budget's changes combined. <coughs> Looking at all seven entities. And that was in your packet, I think, two meetings ago? And then pages 13 and on were in your packet last time. Um, so it's no change, it's just a summary. 
of all the budgets combined with a, a little bit more of what we call function and object codes, um, the way that the state presents it. And then page 16, um, we want to talk about tax rates. Um, so I put it together both ways um, because one of the things I wasn't sure people would be confused by is that we do have in this budget a, an equalized tax rate, which means everyone starts out with the same tax rate. Um, but some of you have common level of appraisals that are over 100% and some are below. So that's why there's a variability by town. Um, if you feel it's too confusing to show the, the equalized part, I'm happy to take that off this chart and just show the right to the meat and potatoes here. What is it that we're looking at for tax increases? That's the top chart. So if that's your feedback, I'm happy to hear it. Um, whatever you have. I think Bill mentioned um, next year we have more um, information on this chart because right now we're really starting with tax rates that were from the old structure. What do you think people will be able to follow best, given that they're thinking that they're used to some to one thing, and now we're asking them to deal with another? Um, <clears throat> do we need to lay out the steps that that so keep the individual um, the the tax rate before CLA, and then um, and then after, so that they can continue to to see, oh yeah, that's what happens. Um, that's what this chart is? Yeah. Uh, I didn't do a difference, um, but I, I know that, um, I think Will's feedback was a little confusing, so. But, you know, but feel like we just want to get right to the point this year, and you just do the top chart without worrying about the equal ones. You could also handle the second chart by an explanation. explanation yeah. All towns start out of tax rate of um, $1.754. Yeah, that, that, that would do it. And the, so leave out the chart, but just put in a uh, explanation, and then, and then at the chart with the, including the CLA information. So all towns start out with an equalized tax rate of a dollar seven fifty four. Mm -hmm. um, the local um, CLA affects the actual tax rate. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which is why the amounts differ for, for okay. I'm sorry, Lori. I, I don't have the um, the chart fresh in my mind, but will we still show each town's CLA? Is yeah, that here, the, here, 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 here. I did not um, put the CLA that, in. No, um, it's I not. Could, if you'd like it, if you'd like it as an extra column, I'd be like the percentage. Could you do that? What yeah, that? just because. Add a column. Sometimes it's it. yeah. Okay. Thanks. I can either put a separate chart at the bottom so that it's not too many numbers in one line. Because then you can see more of a clear relationship between what CLA is and where the tax winds up. Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, people would be able to calculate it themselves, but, but this would just make mm -hmm. it easier. So add a column or put a separate chart? Add a column. Add a column. Yeah, yeah, just have yeah, their CLA. Yeah. Differently. That's okay. Yeah. So add a column. Instead of You're right. Okay. All right, I might just put it over to the yeah. right before we even hit the tax rates. Yeah. Just put it to the Let's left, right beside the name of the town. Okay, great. Thank you for the feedback. That's better. Once we design this, then next year it goes smooth. Um, and then the page 17 is a summary of what is the central office budget comprised of and what types of services. Do people get this was designed years ago by Charlotte Hannah Bassage, and we've been using this um, ever since. It's printed in every town report. I don't know for the last maybe seven eight years. Mm -hmm. So we felt like with all the questions about what does the central office do, it was helpful. Would you like the sheet in or not? I think it's important because yeah, people have always yeah. said we don't vote yeah. on that and we don't yeah. have information on that. Yeah. And that would be the booklet again. Um, it would be. Um, if we approve budget tonight, it puts us on a timeline to start getting um, it drafted up and in motion. Um, and that's why we sent out the revised agenda in case um, we'd be willing to recommend the budget to the WCUS board at a action item later on tonight. 
So, Lord, should the second sentence here be taken out? Because I don't think it's, it's accurate. If oh, sorry, where are you now? Where it says each town each shares town. determined by its equalized pupils. Um, I'm On page 17. Oh, page 17, sorry. Okay. Yeah, it's explaining the central office budget. Mm -hmm. It is still uh, determined by request yeah. by yeah. town, yeah. not by school, but by town. Mm -hmm. Okay. It doesn't make sense to me. If it's a unified budget and a unified, why? Why do you have that? I don't think it, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be. I don't think it would be personally. But if you tell me that that's completely wrong. Well, Was this year's agree. though? Because we voted our. Well, but it's still going to be. Um, For the central office budget. Well, it depends on how it's going to be taxed. I know. Is the tax the tax rates going to go into effect in July, right? Right. Well, so we just but we're still going to be separate. Yeah, double check that just because I don't. I will be happy to double check. I think the you know, the budgets are individually right, but then they're yeah, down to into one, and, it, and it's going to be funded by everyone, not yeah, by not reporting yeah. to town. Right. Yep. I'll just check the wording to see if it's still appropriate. Okay. okay. You're right. It's a can document. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, if you see anything else, it's not too but late to give us feedback. This is for the 1920 budget, right? Well, it, you know, I think it's a whole, it's, from, it's actually, uh, yes, it is, but So I think for the 1920 budget, still one funding source. I mean, it is still one funding source. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Even yeah. though it kind of mm -hmm. came in and yeah. Yeah. It came yeah. in that came way, in but it's fine. Right. Okay. One and that kind of goes back to where, um, Lori, may I just, Recur for a moment to the capital fund um, topic sure. that you raised. Mm -hmm. uh, just to make sure I understand correctly, yes. the capital fund that we're asking voters to approve the creation of, mm -hmm. is that essentially a fund of, uh, a capital fund of capital funds? So that, because I, I, I have this you know, vague notion that um, each school will continue to maintain it, it, its own, its current capital fund mm -hmm. will roll over into a dedicated fund for that school, is mm -hmm. that correct? Right. So the capital fund that we're asking voters to approve is an umbrella for that kind of dedicated... Um, yeah. Yes. Um, okay. Yeah. You explained it perfectly. Because you. you said you have yeah. the column yes. separated yeah. by school, right. but it yeah. will all be voted mm -hmm. on as... Right. Cool. Fund. It's kind of yes. like the food programs are enterprise funds, but there will be a separate tracking for each building's food program. Great. It's the same idea. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. well, that line we're, we're not voting to fund the capital fund, we're voting to create a yes. repository for the capital funds currently in existence to go be poured into. And there are fund transfers built into your individual budgets that need a home to go to. Right. So that's what you're approving. So I don't, my understanding was that the capital funds that, so like Romney has a capital fund now, we're probably going to take money from our general fund and put it into the capital fund at the end of June. And then that money is dedicated towards Romney. Mm -hmm. But going forward, all money that we put into any capital fund will go into the joint capital fund. As part of, but, but I think we, what we need to do is create this entity called a capital fund for the issues of all because right. run, the other ones are going to sure, go away. Sure, they're going to go away, exactly. Yes. So gone. we're just okay, we're creating placeholder. Mm -hmm. Yes. For, for the, the money that current ones that are in existence right. to be put into this new placeholder. It's kind of like opening up the new account. We're using the same kind of wording if we yeah. can, if the lawyer says it's acceptable that U32 used in 2007 when they opened their capital fund. Yeah. It's very simple. Should we call it an umbrella it's capital it's fund then? Well, capital fund is actually a federal description. Okay. Um, there's operating funds and capital funds and enterprise funds, and that is a description of a separate accounting that the feds uh -huh. recognize. But it, you can have separate funds within that. You can have fund. as many funds as you want um, within a fund. Mm -hmm. They call actually they might call it a program. That's fine. So, <laughs> what about do we need to do the same thing for our other funds? The, like, um, those you know what I'm talking about, right? Um, yeah. Those were like the operating fund is the budget. Yeah. So that one it's created when the budget's approved. 
Um, the other funds are designated for specific purpose. Yeah, yeah, like this. So funds. those are, are already established. Is that the, the capital. They don't need an umbrella true. for those. Mm -hmm. but that's what I'm wondering. Kind of, it's part of your operations. Okay. That the students are doing fundraising for student activities, for instance. For that but, school. For that school. Or like right. the, uh, the scholarship. Mm -hmm. okay. Or the Miller Fund. The Miller Fund. That's mm -hmm. the one that I was the most yep. worried about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's all separate. All separate. Any Thank other you for questions? the accounting class. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, Vermont Retirement System. Okay. Yes. So, I think as you were apprised, um, when we settled negotiations, um, we agreed to a new uh, pension benefit, and it's, it's called the Beamers Group B program. And in doing so, we would need board approval to establish this new program. So we've been in touch with the retirement um, system. And what they would need is the, this, this group to um, approve joining the Beamers system. And I'm calling it Beamers. It's Vermont Municipal Employee Retirement System. And what the board would act upon would be for non-bargaining and um, bargaining staff of the WCU USD to participate. And what happens, and we've done this before, is um, you would vote on this tonight and approve it, and then I will need to send the board minutes um, and a list of the eligible positions. So pretty much all custodians are eligible. Um, Romney currently participates in the Plan A. This is actually a better benefit and this is why the negotiation team settled on Plan B, because you get um, to retire earlier and you get a higher um, payment. Um, Doty would participate too. All custodians, all cooks, all everyone in the whole district in the categories that was negotiated and those that were already in other plans would be listed for this um, benefit. So the cost is in the budget. Um, the uh, Union needs this to happen sooner rather than later because what happens is once this board approves it, we send all this documentation and then Beamers has a quarterly board meeting and then their board has to accept our participation and say it falls under the um, articles of agreement that they have for this group. And then after that, then they have all these windows of opportunity where they send it out and people can be grandfathered and not participate or they can participate. They have a window of opportunity to make that decision. Um, for union employees, they get hired after July 1st. Um, they are required in. Um, and for other employees that are non-bargaining that are eligible, they would be required to join July 1. But all existing employees have the option to join or not. Um, did I confuse anyone? I know you were on the negotiation yeah. team, yeah. so I was trying to summarize it. Did, did I miss anything? <laughs> no, you hit every, every point. Um, Louis, does this, it, the Vemers, it, it's, um, is this different from the pension plan that is being written about as having been underfunded for the past 25 years? That's um, the teacher retirement. That's, that's the teacher retirement. True. So, it's a separate, there's, there's three uh, retirement systems that the state manages. One mm -hmm. is for the state employees, the other is for the teachers, and the third is for municipal. Uh -huh. And the municipal has seems to be always on track, from what I can, you know, they send letters every year saying they're funded at like 90% or 85%. Mm -hmm. It's not like there's a big gap of uh, underfunding. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, and, and this is for the non-teaching staff, that's True. what you're describing, custodians and mm -hmm. others. And they, what have they had so far? This? Um, they had the 6% uh, uh, put into uh, 403B, which is a separate retirement account in their name. Mm, okay. And some have been in, like in our office, we've been in Beamers for 10 years. Um, Romney, your group has been in since I started here. Mm. Uh, they had joined Beamers, I'm not sure what year the school started, but way back they had voted in, maybe four years ago. Mm. So do those employees who have been in the 403B, can they roll that over into viewers? And by or? years, yes. Uh -huh. It's a really, that's why they negotiated this round. Uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. They realized it's an opportunity yeah. 
to have a guaranteed <laughs> monthly income when they retire instead of worrying about the stock market. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That sounds, sounds good. So, so is, does this board have the authority to vote on this? Yes. We check with the state mm -hmm. office. Any other questions for Lori and the Beamers? Because they need the vote. Any other yeah. questions? Yeah. Right. It line. takes like yes. Well, it actually, right. it really, they cannot enroll until September because of the 90 day window. So. Right. But it would be effective. But they know that. The union I've talked to them. They know that it's effective July 1, but that they will have an opportunity that will be an open enrollment period through September to actually start participating. Scott? Um, Lori, just because of the Murphy nature of the universe, mm -hmm. um, everything, um, as we were talking about last time, uh, you're prepared to reverse course on if, if it you know, plays out that way? I'm prepared, but I'm not, not, not looking we're forward not excited to it. Yeah. It is, it will be, <laughs> no, the further forward. we go forward, the harder it's going to be to pull back. Yeah. Um, which, you know, guarantees, mm -hmm. practically speaking, yeah. that something outlandish will probably yeah. happen. Great. But, mm -hmm. um, but for the Beamers, it's, it's for contracts, and we are ready to do yeah. that together. Right. Right. Contracts, yeah. so yeah. we yeah. wouldn't be on doing right. This is a yeah. contractual yeah. Yeah. requirement. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what's yeah. right. So it w we wouldn't need to it's undo like that. We are ready to do it together. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Sure. It wouldn't change. It wouldn't change. So I was, unless there's another question. Am I right? Or, yeah. yeah. So unless there's another question, I was going to table articles of agreement for a minute and jump into the action agenda because we would have that fresh right now and we just have those two actions. Everybody's okay with that? Okay. Could I have a motion to authorize the superintendent to sign documents to join the Vermont Retirement System Group B program? Sounds like a motion. I'll second your motion. Oh, well, I'm the chair. Oh, can you oh, make sure. the motion? <laughs> and I'll second. Oh, <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. That's true. To join the Vermont Retirement System Group B program. Second by Kirk. Any more discussion? All those in favor of approving the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstaining? None. Let's move to 4.2. Again, a motion to approve the recommendation for the budget. I have a motion so moved. So moved to Allison. Second. Second, mm -hmm. Second to Susan. Any more discussion? Both those in favor of approving the budget with all of our edits. Mm -hmm. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? We're the same. And none. Let's move on. Thank you. Back to 3.3. Mm -hmm. Agreement. Does everybody everybody have the they were part of that outfit? Yeah, page 18. 18. So I was uh, gonna, we, we gave it just as uh, information, I think we talked about this at the last meeting, but we, we gave everything that you see above uh, to uh, Chris Leopold, to, and he's working on those. Uh, what we have to do by Friday, so we have to get it done today, is Article 4, in order for him to be able to have something for us on our meeting for the 15th, when it's our last time to really get this in order for us to be able to vote on the, on the articles. So I was going to start right, jump into Article 4, unless there's any disagreement with that? No. Seeing none. I, I, don't, I, I know some of you, like Nicole, we're not here, we're not part of the articles of agreement before, so I want to be you know, whoever ha if there's any questions on whatever you read in Article 4 or any clarifications before we like completely dive in, or did you have enough with those minutes? I have to send the minutes after. You're good? Yeah, sure. Anybody else? I have a yeah. question. Um, 
Right. We talked last meeting that all we need is a simple majority to approve an article, is that right? Mm -hmm. And what, can you refresh my memory about for Article 4, what is the ability for the unified board to change that article? The, the unified, it, it, either boards, and you're probably kind of to the same people in some, in some ways, yeah. it, either boards can change it, but right now, because of the timing, whatever we recommend is what will go out yeah. on, the, on the ballot. It just, yeah. we, there's no time to wait. No, no, no I, mean, I, mean, it, it, I mean like down the road. Oh, down the road, down yes. The road. Down the road so after 2020. How would, be, how would it be changed down the road? It would be a vote of, of of the towns, all the, the towns. All the yeah. towns. So, for example, we could uh, this this board could decide that they want to rewrite the articles of agreement in 2020 and put them out to vote. It, you know, I'm not saying yeah. I'm not recommending that, yeah. but so we just as okay. any other, we have the ability to go back to the voters yeah. and say, you know, we we change our mind and you know express our case. Yep. And, and have a vote. And that's a simple but majority of <clears throat> the whole electorate. It's not town by town. Is, uh, well, is, articles, I think, yes, it's yes. just a simple majority of voters. I mean, unless, we, unless we, in an article itself, create a Request. separate mechanism for voting. Yeah. Yeah. Is that clear and if somebody needs And that was a feedback we got. And, and I've been making assumption all along that when we have this time, I'm not talking about after July 1st, the vote on the articles of agreement up or down, not on each article individually. Is that correct? No, we would be voting, That's the true. articles are going individually. Yeah, we could be voting each article. So in other words, the morning, you could vote on all how many articles are there? 13, say. You would vote oh. on 13 articles. So the draft articles of agreement, we have to keep those. Right. And then the changes that we're making, for example, in the board, the number of yeah. board members, that wouldn't take into effect until 2020. Yeah, that part I don't yeah. know, but I'm saying. And so the, the same with the school closing, right? Because we can't touch Article 4 right now. Right. So. So, okay, so they decide to vote on the Articles of Agreement before July 1st. Those articles are basically then the default articles, is that correct? Because yeah, we, we can't change just, Yeah, we're four. just voting, sorry, we're, we're voting on the amendments and we're trying to make the ballot not too crowded. So the feedback, and I don't have the latest from Chris Bill because he didn't have time to get back to us this week. As I understand, and I'm no, Lawyer, okay. uh, we we will have the whole Article Four there, and then the change that we're making, and we would have the same for the t for the present the, town, uh, the board representation. Okay. And then all the all the other four really are amendments, and we're both on those separate. So we don't need to put in, we don't need to vote on the draft articles of agreement because those are given to us, uh, and we just have to abide by that. That's how I, I'd like to. I'd like to see kind of, I don't, can't really have a draft ballot, but we're, something we're written that. up so we have, so I have a picture in my mind or in front of me of what a ballot would look like. I don't need all the words, I just and, need the various items. Yeah, and that's what we're trying to get for Chris. So that's what Chris is going to provide to us in the 15. So if we want Article 4 to be part of that sample ballot, we need to finalize, come to some consensus today so he can add that to the ballot. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean that, you know, once we, once we see that ballot number 15, we would approve them. So we, we don't have an action item today to approve. We already said in our previous meeting, we had an action to say we agree on the, on the default, so it, uh, not on the default, on the amendments and the recommendations. So that's a document already. All we need to do tonight is give him the guidance, what we want in Article 4, so that he can draft, uh, so he can put it in, um, in a ballot form for us and see if it's going to look really confusing or if we don't come to consensus, we will still have that next 
meeting to look at the ballot and say, yes, this is what we want to put in front of the voters. So we're not making the final decision today, but mm -hmm. we have the final time today in order to put that out. Mm -hmm. Is that clear? Yes. Yes. Okay. So. As, as, that's Muddy Universe. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, I did. Looking at notes from, well, this one's 314, I think, from the Articles of Agreement. It seems like there was discussion, and I don't know how much, or I wasn't there, of a five-year moratorium right. of closing anything or having any language that what we're going to do, because this is all, that isn't what any of us want, is to close schools. Yeah. So I'm wondering. That's what we're going to talk to. Okay. Well, that's not. Well, if, in article, if you look at the red, that I just that have put just in. didn't the, make a lot of sense to me is why oh, I went to the notes. Uh, yeah, so because were you at the last meeting? So the extended moratorium I didn't put in five. You know, we had many conversations, so that's up to us. So I we had narrowed it down to two. Our two preferences were either town approval or town veto, whatever we want to call it, and extend the moratorium. So, so when you say town approval, the article number four would be stated that towns approve whether their school is closed or not. Mm -hmm. That yeah, specific to close town. school require the town just, school just the, to just the town, town that the school is in. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Just that town. town. Yeah. And that's only starting the, it, like this two-year moratorium already, and this would okay. take in go into effect after that first two-year period. Okay. Yeah. Where, Where is the are? article is written? That's what I was having trouble with. Oh, 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 I see. So I can read it to you. I have the articles here. It's changed, I think, quite a bit from the original one that was sent to us like months ago. The original articles of incorporation that we'll that like that we got whatever in November. Or something. Oh, there's the fault the fault the fault. Yeah, well yeah. our amendment changes. That, right, so I got that, that part, part B that part B of four. Mm -hmm. and that's why I was trying to find it in the notes from before. I can't, I can't find it anymore. I'm sure it's been sensitive. I'm sorry, but so you want it's not the, you you want the article. We we don't have uh, we we have been taking notes on the on the articles, but we don't have the full article amended. As far as I know, we they, even the even the input that we gave to we have what the article four reads like from. The AOE? But it's not what we're using? It's not the same as this? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Can I see Do you mind reading it out loud? Dramatic reading. Dramatic reading. I have it on my hand. Number four? Yes. Okay, closure of school buildings. Uh, so this is part A, academic years 19, uh, 2019 and 20, and then 2021. So in academic years 1920 and 2021, the new union district shall not close any school building conveyed to the new union district by a forming district or cease using the building to provide direct education in at least one grade, pre-K through grade 12, unless first approved by the voters residing in the towns so town or towns in which the school is located. Provided, however, that if the school building was conveyed by a forming district that was already a union school district, then the new union district shall not close the school building or cease using the building to provide direct education in at least one grade in academic years 1920 and 2021, unless first approved by the electric, electorate of the new union district. Did everybody get that? Yeah, it's just a, yeah. I can scan this and email it to anybody if you need it. That would be helpful. But, and then part B is academic year 2021 to 22 and after. In academic year 2021 to 22 and after, the new union district board shall not close any school building or cease using the building to provide direct education, instruction in at least one grade, pre-K through 12, unless first approved by the electorate of the new union district. So it sounds like it goes from towns for the first two years, from the, the town is in for the first two years to something else. And then there's amendments to the district. Majority vote of the electorate. Right. Yes. To the electorate. After yeah. that. I've, all this time I've been going to these meetings, we've been talking about number four. 
and I'm realizing if I'm listening to A read again, that I'm not comfortable with being able to shrink a school down to one grade. Mm -hmm. I, I, that is analogous, uh, analogous to eventually closing it. Especially when you include pre-K. Yeah, we'll have pre-K here, but that's it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would like to amend that one too, um, to re consider the whole school or something more than one grade. K through three, maybe? What? Pre-K through three, maybe? Oh, I think so, you'd say a number of grades if you were doing that yeah. versus... Yeah. I, would versus just which not, grades. I would just say it doesn't get closed, period, and right. with a number of grades. That's correct. my personal feeling. Yeah, so I, I, I'm trying to think back in, at our conversations in... in we in, didn't in, talk in, about A much, as I recall. No, 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 we did. We, we, did. Talk we, did. we talked bit, about yeah. A. Uh, uh, but but uh, the perils uh, of it, meaning that it could be a indirect way of closing a school by drinking it. Well, after I'm as reading school. what's been happening in various other merged districts, voluntarily merged districts even, I'm finding this is not a good plan to have. That I think that we need to keep our schools whole at least for the first two years. And if we want to talk about moving grades around after that, fine. Let the, let the board talk about that. So it, that's where we were at the last time that we talked. I remember it this right, and I'll scroll through the notes. But the last time we talked about Article 4 on, on A, we then had, it was not even one of the hottest topics. B was what we yeah, had voted right, at the yeah. end. We, we actually went through A pretty quickly, because what we said is that we didn't want to tie that board's uh, hands to, you know, to not be able to, you know, sort of do what they needed, what they needed to do at at the time, and we felt that we had consensus in that we wouldn't, you know, that if you know academically it doesn't make sense to have one grade in in what's good. That the, the, the circumstances for that to happen were very unlikely. So that's that's where we were. But I don't know if you guys remember something. There. We spent quite a bit of time on on Article Four. Yeah. Yeah. So. So we sort of gave up on, on that part on, on A because we wanted to make sure that B uh, gave either that authority to the town or that we had a longer moratorium than the two years. So we already have two years granted. Two years but, granted, not necessarily for a, a school can be shrunk down to two grades, if you want to say, or pre-K. Mm -hmm. uh, I find that uh, then but we wouldn't be able to change, I'm not trying to not listen to you, but we wouldn't be able to change that. We can't change right. A? We can't change A right now. We could change A in the future like we were doing with, the, well, what we're doing with B. I think, why can't we change A right now? Why can't we change A? We can't change, we can't really change A or B, right? B is starting, will be in effect in 2020. Jeez. No, no, I was looking at this. Oh. And it says how different things can be oh. changed. Yeah, I have it. It's like this last page. Next yeah. Last page. Uh, so this is, uh, it says the substance of the following orders can be amended only if approved by the voters of each town identified in Article 1C. So and it talks about Article 4, Paragraph A. Um, but you know what, that's, that's, I think that's the wrong paragraph, because then it has a parenthesis explaining what it is and says building can be closed in, um, oh no, that's, that's right. Because um, it talks about the building being closed. It doesn't talk about the class structure though. Um, <coughs> and so, the way this reads, it would need, you would need a vote of the town, in, as, as the article indicates, in order to, um, to change that article. We're, you're in B on... Wait a minute, I'm not following you. So article, I'm, I'm on, this is at, on page 12. 12 of 13 yep. of the big packet, when it talks about what articles, how articles can be changed, and who gets to do it. Yeah, so in B is Article 4, Paragraph B, 
building closure requires approval by voters of district. Yeah, but it doesn't say anything about so A. Paragraph A. Why not? Then it's white. Well, this under D, but the next does. one does talk about Article 4, Paragraph A. Okay. Oh, there. Under okay, the cells in the fire can be amended only if it's under the fire. Okay. 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 This is That's the called closing. I was addressing shrinking it to one grade. Right. But that, uh, that right yeah, there right. is closing. That's a different. Mm -hmm. I agree. I'm not disagreeing with you. Yeah. I'm just How can we? I think I think the way my uh, a, a simple fix might be, any effort to shrink it has to be you know, done by supermajority of the board, or something along those to lines. To change grade com not grade configurations, grade. but grades that are offered through a particular school. Right. Yeah. And then we could I guess grade we configurations could, as well. Whatever. Should we, wait, could we put right. that as a recommendation and change because. It, I mean, I don't know if that, I mean, we should talk about what would be, what you would want to, we would want to see as a, as a, uh, you know, stopgap measure in terms of, of shrinking uh, grades or, or limiting grades from school and whether that's enough. I don't know if it would be enough. Um, you know, I, I, I kind of think of it in the terms of Callis who has that very small class. And so, oh, we'll just move that whole class over to Worcester, East Montpelier, or wherever. And that just leaves a hole in the school mm -hmm. for whatever many years. So I find it. I think it would be a very mm -hmm. odd thing to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, because our schools, all of them, are small enough that we've constantly done multi grade or reconfigured to fit those little bubbles or the big bubbles that come through. I know, but that's kind of like, like when, when we were, our board was discussing some, so I, some another, similar. a similar thing is like, yeah, you expect the people to do the right thing. Chris, that's what we're thinking, that's thinking that's now, right. but we're not those people that are going to be sitting there. So, and so I just, it's kind of like my will. I expect my family to do the right thing, but I'm right down so they do. Sure. So they will do. <laughs> Are we still trying to determine if we even have the right to alter that? We, we can alter we can, school closing, but I, think I don't, we I don't, I don't see that we can but, alter you know, We would have to go to, a, a, I would say, the way it reads here, you have to put it up to a vote. And the tent, yeah, the tent. Well, that's what we're putting it up for. Isn't right. that what we're doing? In, in the the but the, but the, but we're putting the, out the amendments. Yeah, but the way the other one it. reads is it's a vote of the town affected. Yeah. Um, and to close a school. To close the school. Yeah. Right. That and you're period. all looking at. Yes. What about the 90 days? I think that's what we were looking at today. Well, the 90 um, days expired a long time ago. Yeah, so we're looking, if you keep going, go to the last page of the, um, no. See, I think there's some and different And it gave you a February 28th date, so I think, yeah, we have different dates on it. Yeah, do, mine you has 13 dates, <laughs> 12 of 13. I yeah, know. and I, I have the, I, I have the big package, I, I which takes 18 pages. Of all articles of agreement, Washington Central, yeah. 002. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know if that's uh, what other people are looking at. Yeah. 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 But at the end, yeah. so keep going down. Yeah, that one does yeah. 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 yeah, I think that's that does do the thing. I know, I didn't know I had that computer here. It's like I can't see it. All right. I, I, so so I'm end. reading it now. I want to make sure I understand yeah. this. It has to first be approved by the voters residing in the town in which the school is open, even shrinking it to one grade. Mm -hmm. Then I have the wrong. No, I think you're reading the right thing, but it doesn't say in the parentheses, talks about closing the school. It says here. Yeah, shall not close any building conveyed so forth or cease using the building to provide direct education with one grade, three standards three, unless first approved by the voters residing in the town in 
at the school it was located. So they could go so down to one still, grade. The, but the voters in the town have to, have to approve it yeah. if mm -hmm. they shrink so, it to so one that's grade. Why no, anything oh. further than one yeah. grade. Further one. They have to cease vote. using for at least at one least. grade. Yeah, yeah. Will is absolutely right about that. Down to one. To it it one. actually gives yeah, a lot of discretion one. to the board to, to shrink it down to one okay. grade. Well, mm -hmm. it's so odd. There's no point to one grade. No. Financial leaders, I think I think I'll say you're building a city. It is a that you just put nobody would do that. Yeah, I mean, but then if nobody would do that, then why have it in there? I agree. Two. 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 No, well, my, I, I guess my hope, it seems like we have a new issue, an article, but not new, but one that we didn't dive in from what I'm hearing enough at our last few meetings on articles of agreement. So, but I, I would like to be able to give uh, Chris the upper, the bulk, at least the one that was our hottest priority. Right, was even B. It, which was B. <laughs> So, and, and we know that we can amend that. And so if we could talk about that, and then if we have enough time after that, we could continue to? I agree. Is that okay? Sure. Solve that problem first. Yes. Yeah. Let's solve one, and then we'll get money again. The other parts. Is that okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you good with that? So we, for, for that one, let's go back to my package. Wait. We had talked about two preferred options. Should we vote on those preferred options, or should we have more discussion around the preferred options? One option being giving the veto power to the town, and the other option being extending the moratorium to, I think that last conversation was five years, right? So I see here. So, Yes. I'm, I'm sorry for to no, interrupt. This is good. I yeah. just wanted to um, perhaps suggest reframing the yeah. first option that you were describing instead of veto power to the town. Yeah. Double approval. Double. Yeah. Yeah. Or give the power back to the town. Or yeah. The town, um, the town, the town vote. Yeah. The town vote. That both it would be both the approval of the host town and mm -hmm. the approval of the of the unit of the, of all whatever the this thing is. Mm -hmm. But we, when we had that conversation, then it's like, which vote right. was that? You would so have to have were, both. You would have, it would be a double approval. You'd have to have, you couldn't just have the um, either, I mean, not, what, either the whole district approving um, and overruling the host town, or have the host town wanting to unload. I mean, I can't imagine that, but who knows, wanting to unload their... Um, their school on the on the district. I mean, it would need to be both, both the host town. It, it, am I? I'm everybody's confused. sort of looking at. But that's why he's not saying one trumps the other. He's saying it has to be both. But how do you, how do you guarantee both? Let's say the town says <coughs> no. Nope. No. 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 And all of the towns say yes. Then it fails. Then it fails. Right. Exactly. Has to be voted on again. With more. And then so how many? Uh, keep doing it so you get one. Then you have one hard school so school's not closed because it didn't pass. That's that's how I understand. Okay. Am I? Okay. And I, yeah, I, I was thinking it was just. Have I, have I been hallucinating all this time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What it means? I don't think it does need a double vote. Yeah. It needs two approvals. The school board. The school board is what. And then gets the approval of the town to do yeah. it. I don't think you need the approval of the electorate as a whole. Hmm. I mean, Just the town affected. That, right. Mm -hmm. right. <coughs> that's how we had left it last, so that's why I was so confused. But I was hallucinating. <laughs> so you did that one we did, one town we, we did talk yeah. about that option. The board okay. puts it out, okay. approves that the town can put it out to the vote. Yeah. But we had talked like the board, and, and I think we eliminated that, that the, we would have to have a super majority of the vote of, of the board. <coughs> say we need to close that school and then put it to that town to vote. And that's that was like the double check. So mm -hmm. but not the entire electorate. electorate. Mm. But if that works, 
legally, I just don't know how many easy. times you can. I think it's easier to, you know, like the, the, the entire board should be like really prepared to defend it, have had a lot of hard conversations in order to bring this to a vote. Well, if they've come to that conclusion, there should be a lot of data. I was going to say, there has to be a pretty good reason. Yeah, and a lot of data. They should be able to, to make their... It's not something they do lightly. And then yes. we would put it... In that argument. We, we're saying if we would, that is not enough to put it out to the whole of our bread. We want the town to have the ability to, mm -hmm. okay. to overrule the board. To right? make the final decision. To make the final decision. Mm -hmm. That's, let's call that A. Yes. And then B is extending the moratorium for five years. Okay. Questions? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Let's not call A and B, because we've got an A that we haven't solved yet. Oh, no, well, so this option yeah. one is <coughs> for, for B. We're talking about... We're talking about B. Yeah. We're going to have two options, one and two, yes. or something like that. Yes. I guess I don't understand the decision. difference one and two versus A and B. Are we talking something? Because the article no, no, is a section A and B. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's call it an I can put it on the blackboard, in the whiteboard. Old fashioned blackboard. Any discussion on that? Or any input in how we should approach this? Should we, is there more interest? We should do also thumbs up. Is there more interest in the moratorium or more interest in the town approval? Or put both up to vote? You know, I'm, I'm trying to listen yeah. to everybody. <laughs> you see what it's like, like what we're sending to Chris. Yeah. So what we'd be sending to Chris is basically just guidance. Just we would be saying, Chris. Our interest is to have the majority mm -hmm. of the board approve that the school needs to close, mm -hmm. and uh, and then have the town That's being give, the, give the, the town the power, the, yeah, the vote, mm -hmm. the vote, the but town that is being affected, mm -hmm. the ability mm -hmm. to vote yes or no on the school closing. That's and that one would option. Last for two years. You what? And that would last for two years? No, that would last for. Mm -hmm. It would last until we voted differently. The two years is that no school can be closed. Yeah, we have no, no school, school right. Yeah. It's like a freeze. Approval. Yeah, but what we're Nobody's trying to what we're trying to do is that. Yeah, what we're trying to do in, in the other option is to just say we want five years. That the other option we want a five year moratorium on no closing mean. school, but then there's no other guidance to from from the board, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wasn't Clear. on the uh, yes. articles committee. Yes. Is is there anyone who was and who supports one or the other and wants to make a pitch for one or the other? Or? So I, would, I was um, in favor of the town approval, um, and the reason for that was that uh, the town um, is intimately tied with the school, and the school is intimately tied with the town. Uh, and closing school has a very negative, in my view, a negative impact on uh, the town's uh, life, livelihood in life uh, because it would impact things like social interactions where a lot of social interactions take place at a school, particularly when you move into town, that's where you meet everybody, that's where you establish relationships, that's where you go to events, uh, um, that's where you attend, uh, you probably wouldn't impact town meeting, um, but not having the school um, is, is a distance of people who move to that town. and so. I, I think you can just set it on a slow path to uh, becoming um, a less vibrant town um, for the students that are there. I mean, of course, students could be go to a different school, um, but it's it's different. Uh, it's just you know, and there there is a maybe a I don't know. It's a, a my town thing, but but it's more than that because the school adds, especially when there's not a, a vibrant town center like Montpelier has downtown. And none of our towns have that, I don't think. Worcester sort of does. Worcester? I would say Worcester does. Mm -hmm. It does have a downtown, but it has a much it's not compact <coughs> town. Yeah, but not the kind of social yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. Yeah. you know, Dallas yeah. yeah. has the Lammy Bar, or yeah. it did anyway. <laughs> I don't know if that, well, yeah, well, that qualifies. You do, you, yes, you do. So the school serves that function 
in a very significant way. And so that's where I think if it, the town should have that um, authority to approve a recommendation within the school to close because it's just so much more than a school. Okay. And I will point out that very thing to vote next time. So um, the minutes of 314. Town approval was four, moratorium was three. And there, Alan Gilbert didn't vote. He had a different yeah. criteria. Yeah. Uh, and so and I then it was just ended with bills. Right. Yeah. It was, it, so. yeah. yeah, we were ended minutes before we were divided, right? Pretty close, half, right. Half and half. And, half. Yeah. and then I was in the Argos Committee before, and we, you know, some of us felt like it, the, having the board have that super to the board having the super majority and having to have make that hard decision, we'd have had to take into consideration what it will do to to that town and then it would be put out to the entire electorate, not just the town. But I you know, I I since then have had other thoughts and you know, to move on, on that. For me it feels like the moratorium is less helpful than a town vote. So a town vote in perpetuity is a, it's a huge step in trying to make sure that the towns that are all being put together still have that safety net of feeling like they're not, you know, if they don't want to, they're not going to be tossed somewhere. I mean, they've already been tossed one place, they're not going to be tossed somewhere else that they don't want to be. And I think Chris said it very well, what the school means. That certainly I, it was a great, I thought mm -hmm. that was just kind of how I feel about it as well. Um, except you said it better. And, um, and so if we continue to give the towns to vote as a moratorium, like for just five years, that feels a little like putting off the inevitable that everybody's worried about regarding Act 46, that they're going to close our school. And I also feel like Worcester and Cowles have had to swallow a fair amount with this merger. And then suddenly now I, I, I personally think that those towns might be concerned with our small schools end of five years. Now you're going to do this to us yeah. too. And I can imagine that would be a lot of resentment. So I feel like the board, I feel like this whole union would get along better if everybody had that security that East Montpelier, Berlin, and, and Romney sort of knew we have to put our resources into all the schools equally. And the towns had this, so they, they had that um, bigger picture look on it. They're, you know, we're going to be with you guys for a long time, so let's make this all work. And then the towns also had the reassurance that they weren't going to be tossed to the curb. I mean, that's, the city, that's the city <laughs> version. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think they go wrong by allowing the towns. I've yeah, always said this. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to make the right choice yeah. depending on what's going on with the school right. at yeah. that time. Mm -hmm. No one's going to ask for a school to be closed unless there is a, reason. a really good reason. Yeah. 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 And I think every person in every town wants the children to have a rich educational experience. And if that's in jeopardy, then they're going to look at this vote very carefully. And I think they'll, they'll make the right choice if that indeed ever comes to, to happen. It, it may not, but I think we need to let them have that say. And the, the moratorium doesn't let us have the conversation either. Yeah. Yeah. It just says you can't True. close. True. But you can't even, you don't True. give the board ability to to have that hard conversation. Not, I'm not suggesting any means that it's something that I want. You know, I yeah. don't want, you know, I think we should have five excellent schools. But, but it at least gives the board the ability to, to talk and not put the board in a position that, you know, that it'd be going under or in the red for, I, I, for I, I kind of agree with Chris and people who are promoting it, but I also have an added thought to it is that by, by knowing these little schools can say, no, we don't want to be closed, I think it will make our five towns work better together to That's make right. sure yeah. that yeah. Allison kind of said yeah. that, that to make sure that we have what we need in well, each town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's it. Anybody mm -hmm. pro moratorium? Anybody for I, I'm, not, I'm not necessarily anti-town vote, but I, I do think it's not quite that. I, I think it might be a little bit of a false assurance 
Like I, I think yeah. you, what you just said is, if that little school doesn't want to close, but yeah. that, that's not who's going to be voting. Very, very few people. If you look at the whole, a whole town's electorate, have very few people actually have kids in an elementary school at any one time, and if the big board does a study or makes a pitch that look taxes are going to go down if this we rearrange that um, that might be very compelling even for the people who are living in the town who have really no who knows I have no involvement with the elementary school and so I I'm not sure that it's uh, such a stopgap to you know the the importance of having a school in the town, et cetera, et cetera, because there's a lot of other people in the town that um, will be looking at what the board is looking at as far as the economics of it. But but that would give the electorate the ability to weigh those things and make that decision. Mm -hmm. I just don't I don't see it as such a um, protection uh, for the okay. schools necessarily. Well. Actually, we just think any of these is not 100% pr protection because the official board a year down the line can say we want to change this and get the electric to change right. those sure. articles. Yeah. So That's why I this, asked is as, this is as, it, it's not concrete, it's slurry. You make a good yeah. point actually. If yeah. we were to approve school choice, then this would all become much more complicated be taxes um, and what somebody paid in one town and, and then what like because I, I was originally thinking oh but you know the argument that if you don't have a school your your property's gonna be worth less so but actually if we had school choice that might be the opposite so school am I making any sense yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. so would the a better protection be a requirement of two votes of what a requirement of two votes in successive years to take an action, because then it's it's not being in response to maybe a hot button item no. at the time, and that's that's one of the greatest concerns that I think I have is that in response to a um, economic pressure, the you know, board may decide well we should close the school and and you know, reassign these students to the other schools that have room. And that would be a saving, um, and it would be a response to, and you know, maybe a blip, maybe an economic blip or not. But I think there's no denying that down the road there's going to be a lot of pressure on reducing costs, um, or at least minimizing the the uh, rate, rate of growth. And that's where I think the um, momentum for closing schools would come from. Uh, is is it's just that that type of thing. So, but if you require the vote over two years. Um, you could at least dissipate that. Um, kind of th I think we do that for the Constitution. But if the, if, the, or if the town votes it down, it would be needed to vote it again, right? So it's kind well, of... If you wanted to close it, you would have to have a permanent vote twice. You know, if, it, if they rejected it, you get one vote. But if you wanted to... Um, to actually close to it. To actually close it, then a permanent vote twice. Which also gives time for making plans. If a school was being closed, that's a big could, deal yeah. with transportation, yeah. with who right. goes where, with yeah. lines, all of that is um, as much as I think town lines don't make sense because you can live next to a school and have to go cross town. Um, <laughs> I know. Nobody right there. <laughs> and I think that that just doesn't make sense because if I lived, I'd rather my kids go to one close and I'd be a part of that. It doesn't matter what right. town I live in. Um, because if my kids are in the school, that's who I have. That's a, your community. That's yeah. it. Um, but if we were closing a school, that would bring up so many more issues that you'd need the two years. I think even if you closed a school, you'd have to have dates in place for longevity or sure. figure it all out. I think you just said something interesting. You just said that yes. that school, you know, the school where your kids go is your community, and you would agree. To that and, and that just kind of eliminates, you know, like not eliminates, but 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 it all puts into perspective that that we are all kind of committed to each other. That if but you're ta if you needed to go to Dodi, your community would be would have been around Dodi. You still mm -hmm. you still have been part of Palace. 
but you would have been as invested. You know, I'm not trying to minimize it, but it was just, it was kind of beautiful to see that, right? Well, but you guys it's were, also, I family is coming. where you meet. Your community. Yes. Uh -huh. Right. I just wanted to point But that's out. assuming the school stays open. Correct. Correct. Um, because it's, right. you know, you have neighborhoods right. and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but, 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 yeah. I mean, one of the nightmares of uh, kids coming to U32 is all of a sudden they find friends that are 45 minutes <laughs> away, uh, <laughs> but still within the district, but that's But they always end. find those. They always, they always find those. <laughs> exactly. And that's one of the lovely things is they spread out the people they know right. from these small schools. And, and that's the tough part. With the people who live the farthest away from U32, because nobody ever can pick you up on their way. You're always the one that's picking everybody else up on their way. It's an interesting thought. Britain certainly would have appreciated Chris's proposing that idea several years ago. <laughs> what? So, come talk about Brexit. I mean, oh, there's, yeah. there's decisions that you make that end up you don't quite necessarily appreciate the consequences. Right. So, it's actually, it's a, it's a, I hadn't thought of that. It's a good idea. <laughs> Maybe they should have two votes for Brexit. <laughs> I think, yeah. Some of them. Unless there's urgency for that. <laughs> so, I, I would like to vote on the two options that we had on the table. Sure. Sure. Including um, the modified version, the, the McVeigh and modified version. Do we have a one <laughs> category McVeigh? <laughs> Not trying to overrule you, I was trying to keep it simple, but I didn't want to get into another, like, is, is there interest, and I can go one by one, in on the modified version, having two consecutive votes there? I, I, or thumbs up, so I don't put anybody in I think we missed the member here. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah. Like, this is all new to me. Yeah, but I, you had yeah, interest in the... About what is your... I like the mod. I like the double. The double vote. Yeah. The double vote. I don't like that double vote. <laughs> 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 double vote. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm pro one slash McVeigh, so the town vote with a double vote McVeigh style. Mm -hmm. So as a person more than yeah. Okay. Okay with that. I'm, I'm not really. I, no. I, I think it's complicated. I think it'll be confusing for the voters. And I think a board who's, who's seriously proposing something like this, they'll have set out a multi year plan anyway. So I, the, the need for having more time, they'll 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 deal with that in their propose in whatever they're proposing. So I don't, I guess I don't feel it's necessary. Um, the two vote affirmative. Two vote affirmative. I, I don't feel I I to the mm. same way that Will feels. I, I don't feel it's necessary, and I think that the board to get to that conclusion would have had to do a lot of very very hard work and have a. It had, had a proposal that included numbers and included, you know, what would happen before. So, mm -hmm. I'm not feeling real strongly just because I was thinking about you can always appeal votes mm -hmm. with that 30 day business and petition and have another re vote that way. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, I think as we move along with a new board and they can change things down the road, I think it might be confusing. So at first I was kind of leaning that way, but I just think having the one vote, and if they don't like it, they'll appeal it and get all those signatures. Um, I, I find the McVeigh double very interesting, um, and uh, I, I'm inclined in that direction, although I think if, if it doesn't carry, yeah, I mean, it's an incremental improvement over uh, a single vote, just to just to make sure that everybody's serious about it. But um, yeah, uh, congratulations, Chris. <laughs> Great creativity. But he didn't agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, just want to be clear that he didn't vote because, it for his own. That's because he's a lawyer. So he, he throws out ideas. And, Carol, can you clarify again if you were double or not? I guess I don't really feel strongly. You know, I, but can you go one way or another in order to decide? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't. I guess I'll, I do not feel a need for the double vote. Okay. okay. Where are we going? Uh, six, six for the two vote, four for the one. 
Well, you didn't even need to hear from me. Oh, yeah, sorry. Well, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we do. They made me just twice. assuming you were being counted. Yes. Um, I, I personally don't think that we need a, a second vote. I think the first one is, is it's hard enough to get people to come out for one vote. Uh, I think it complicates matters unnecessarily. Um, I'm not, I don't think we've ever had a history of having to have people come out and vote twice for one thing. So I think it's confusing for them. I don't think that they're going to understand why they would need to come a second time. I don't think you're going to get anyone the second time. They've already done it. Um, there will be a core few who understand. <laughs> Not many. But no, I, I don't think it's necessary. I think we just go with one. I think it will be, the board's not going to bring it to a vote unnecessarily and without really, really, really good reasons. So that's still five to six? Yeah. Um, you can just ask Chris Leopold to prepare language for, for both. It's going yeah, to be that hard. That's yeah. So we, yeah, okay, so we forget. Might, so I guess when we're, at, yeah, when we're agreeing, we're forgetting completely about the moratorium. We don't need to discuss mm -hmm. that. And we'll give Chris uh, to put into paper mm -hmm. what these two options mm -hmm. will mean. Because yeah. we'll make a decision. They're both pretty much. Well, that would tell us how same. confusing it would be. Yeah. If you're voting, if you're a voter, mm -hmm. what do you need two votes? Or if it's not confused, that might. That would help. I think yeah. that's true. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, just if it's any comfort, um, when we're talking about A, it looks like the there's at least some protection on class structure for two years well, built into the articles. Hold one minute. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Could you <coughs> sort of? We what we're sending, so there's this agreement. So what we're sending to Chris, so that we both. Yes, let me just go back here okay. and make sure. Um, okay, so so what I have so far, I haven't done the two two year. Okay, so school closure would have to be approved by the majority of the school board in the town where the school is located, and that's just one vote. And I will also add in here that same language. Um, Can you go back? The school, super majority of the school board? School closure would have to be approved by the majority of the school board. Yeah, just regular. Right and the town where the school is located. Yes. Okay. And then I will add to that um, <clears throat> um, another option that will include something to the effect of. Um, that it must have an affirmative vote in two consecutive years. So that same language meant at in two consecutive years. Affirmative town vote? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think we need to go. <coughs> okay. Moving right along. Yes, please. So the stuff in um, Article 3B um, states that in sub, sub 2 says, in the, for two years, academic year 19, 20, and 2021, the new union district board shall not restructure the grade configuration of any school building conveyed to it by a forming district. Yeah. Um, now, it's... It, You're yeah, talking it, about Article 3? 3, 3, 3B. Three 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 three. Uh, this three. is on page 2 of 13. And, but it, it defines the structure and grade configuration um, above uh, and it's in this meeting, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, so you couldn't go down to one grade? No. You could Based not go on this. One. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't reassign grades because mm -hmm. part of the definition is uh, mm -hmm. um, that you couldn't require children in the grade or grades to attend classrooms located in a different school. Correct. So it creates it a, protection at least a two right year. There. So that protects A. Right. For A. For two yeah. years. That's fine. Yep. Yeah. So we don't Thank you. Have to <laughs> mm -hmm. It's so nice when people awesome. meet. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. No, I just wonder if, if we wanted to extend that further. I mean, it's still after two years, you could go down to a preschool, but we can. 
But in yeah, two but years, they'll be a new years, board. Yeah, new the, board, and they can and and they can accept it, extend it. They can, and then they they can make, make, make it forever, forever, or whatever, or until <laughs> someone else does. Right. Yeah. Our schools, okay. Yes. 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 Back when we were yeah, all involved probably, right, really yeah. in depth on the articles, and it's just been a little while. Yeah. Um, so, we've done all the actions. Any future agenda items? The future is hazy. It's, it's next Wednesday, right? The 15th? The 15th. Yeah, the 15th. Yeah. Where is that one? Shall we use the return? Back at U32, it's just we, the, the all states is going on at U32 today, and that's why it's nice to be in the different schools. It's yeah. Nice. yeah. I don't do change for her. Except not as much as you And that, and that <laughs> meeting, it's it's not at the SGA office, but it. And that is an important meeting. So it's at the school or the office? At the school or the SU office? I don't know. I don't know. I thought it was at the SU office, but we don't have an agenda yet. Okay, yes. so with it. But it's a, it's an important meeting because we would have the stuff back from Chris Leopold. So we would be making these decisions. We make the most important right now, the budget, and that, that part needs to go out and the post are going. But if we really want to have a vote on the articles, that is the day. Yes. Emergency. Oh, can you go in? Or you would be fine. Yeah, well, you will have the package before, so you can always send your input from and, and Matthew will be at that meeting, so he'll be That's great. Thanks, Jamie. Yeah. Board communication. I just wanted to share with everybody I sent an email today to the future new board, which is a lot of you guys about participating in that board training. Yeah, all uh, together, and because we can't, I can't have a back and forth via email, and a lot of us are here. I wanted to respond to your last email and just said that you know, it's I I understand the feeling that you know, the people, you know, there's some numbers have about the VSBA right now, but the VSBA does more than just you know those two issues that I'm not agreeing with, and that there's a lot of people that are working there, and the that you know that represent included myself like I like really you know we're all trying to have a more include you know like, just really have those conversations and and the, this training is not it's a it's not a um, brainwashing training or thing. it's just it's just a, it's not yeah, yeah. It, no no it's just it's it, it's just the you know what the it's regular the it's the basics yeah. when you get the book. Yeah, and you get the book, and it's just the basics, and I just thought if those people fit together, you know, I don't particularly love the idea of going to an training, but I do love the idea of going with the people that we're going to be working with, and it's just the, the basics, that's not, and I agree with you that we should have a future one, which is just geared to us, how we want to break, but this sort of puts us in a level playing field with everybody, or just what's, you know, what, what is the law and it's just it's just basic it's not there's no there's no agenda there's some scenarios i think i i haven't taken that one in a little while i'm it's all going day. through the board training because the one i went to was yeah, in the evening is, and the, like four hours or something i know they they try to do it differently they, they, we have been doing it regionally and now there's been a lot of webinars but there was a lot of input that during the week was not good for most people. They wanted to do it Saturday, so they tried to do something different where there would be like breakfast and lunch and do case scenarios and, you know, sort of have people get to know other people too from other parts of the, the state. Do you it's, know when the training is? It's, uh, yes, June 1st. June 1st. Black and when is the deadline for people to sign up? So they haven't put in a deadline yet, okay. but it would be nice by May. You know, 
the last days. To the first week, they did do need to reply. It's just, it's not at a very fancy location. It's at the state house. Was it? At the state house in Marlin. Very hot Very hot Road. So, you know, I'm just putting my little, I didn't want to go back and forth. But, you know, I, I am very happy to work and make sure that your voice is represented at the CSEA. No, you don't okay. worry about the next one. I know, I know, but I just wanted to. Sorry for the long communication. Yeah, but I have a motion to adjourn. I move. Second. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks.